If you are a creator on Teachers Pay Teachers or you want to become a creator and a seller on TPT, you may have heard some terms thrown around like flatten and secure, save as a PDF, and you're like, what does all of this mean? I want to make sure I'm following the rules and I get it. You should follow the rules, but it's a little bit complicated when you don't know what all of these terms mean. So I want to break it down for you in this episode what softwares you should be using, how to know what the terms of use are for clip art and fonts, all the things. So let's get into it. First of all, you may be asking yourself, why is this important? Why does this matter? And there are a few reasons. The first reason is you want to protect your work. You don't want it to be easily copyable, easily redistributed. And you also want to make sure that you're saving your resources in such a way that follows the terms of use of any clip art and fonts that you are using. Now, I will say that I do see a trend towards editable resources. Editable means obviously that the seller is listing something on TBT that the buyer can then go and edit it to make it their own. So then how are they protecting their work if the buyer can just go in and edit it? Well, there are ways to do that. There are certain ways to protect editable work, but I will say that you don't have to make every resource editable. I only have assessments that are editable in my store, so quizzes and tests, but my notes and worksheets, which are my number one seller, they are not. It's just a flattened and secured PDF, and that's what the the buyer gets, and I just make that really clear in the description. Now, there is almost always a way that even if you flatten and secure, someone is going to be able, if they really want to, to edit, to do what they want with, you know, a, a nefarious motive. Maybe they want to buy it and resell it as their own. That's going to happen. So I don't want you to be stressing about that too much, but you do want to take precautions to try to limit that as much as possible. Again, it's up to you whether you want to make your resources editable or not, but we are going to be talking about non-editable in this episode. The second reason is you want to make sure that you are following the terms of use if you are using clip art and fonts. So anytime you purchase clip art and fonts from TPT or other locations, they will normally, they should have a terms of use. How can you use this clip art or this font set? And inside of that terms of use file, you are looking for these two words flatten and secure. It's going to depend on the, the clip art artist, the font creator, whether or not they want you to do that. But if they do, let's talk about what that means. So let's talk about flatten first. Flatten means to take each page of your resource, whether you make it in PowerPoint, in Canva, or in Google Slides. Those are the three that I'm going to be talking about because that's typically what I recommend. Keynote is also the same thing in PowerPoint, so that works too. You want to take every element on the slide and make it into one flat image. So saving as a PDF is not the same as flattening. Flattening means taking each slide and making each element into one image so that you can't lift the clip art, the text, the fonts from that file, from that slide. So how do you flatten? If you have a terms of use that says to flatten, and, and I recommend flattening anyway just to protect your own work, but technically if you are not using clip art or fonts that say to flatten, technically you don't necessarily have to flatten, it's up to you. Um, but I do recommend it because just saving as a PDF, there are ways that people can edit them. So what you would need to do, it's going to depend on what program you're using. If you're using PowerPoint or Google Slides, you can save each slide as an image and then reinsert it as the background. Now I'm going to give you a faster way to do that with PowerPoint. Flatpak is going to be your best friend. Flatpak is an add-on for PowerPoint made by Bearwood Labs. You can buy it on Teachers Pay Teachers and they have a version for Microsoft and a version for Mac. And you can flatten and secure the file in one click. It makes it super easy. So I recommend most TBT sellers just get Flatpak. It's a one-time fee and it just makes things a lot easier, especially if you're using a lot of clip art. I do see that typically elementary sellers are using a lot of clip art and most of their clip art artists are asking them to flatten and secure. So with Flatpak, it's just one click. Now with Canva, when you save it as a PDF, there is a checkbox to flatten it. So you can check that checkbox to flatten it. 
but that doesn't secure it. So let's talk about what secure means. Secure means to add a password. It's just an extra layer of protection. Now, I'll be 100% honest. I, <laughs> I almost feel like the securing part is a step too far, but I know that like, as softwares improve that there are going to be ways to unflatten even a flattened document and i get that so securing is just an extra layer of protection and it adds a password so you you come up with a password and the only way to edit that file is with the password and so you don't give your customers the password only you know the password and they are not allowed to edit it so how can you do that well flat pack also does that it will do that in one click there are some other options so adobe is what i personally use Adobe Pro, but the reason I use Adobe Pro is because I use it for other aspects of my business, like signing contracts, things like that. So Adobe Pro is on the more expensive side and I don't recommend that unless maybe you already have a subscription to that through something. I, I think that's fine. <laughs> there are other options if you don't wanna use Flatpak. Flatpak doesn't work on Canva files. So if you're creating solely in Canva, then you would need something else. There are other options out there if you just search password protect my pdf there are lots of options that are either free or very low cost and that's what i would recommend same thing with um with google sites unless you export the google site as a powerpoint which you can do and then you can flatten and secure it that way so those are your options flat pack is for powerpoint it's the best option if you're using powerpoint but if not you can use some type of pdf secure program now again you only have to do that if the terms of use say to secure it. Some of them will just say to flatten and then you just have to flatten it and that's fine. So just be aware of that. So if you're using Google Slides, I just wanna be really clear here. So with PowerPoint to flatten it, you either use Flatpak or you save each slide as a picture, as an image. You can file export all slides as an image. I would do PNG because it's crisper. And then you reinsert those as the background of each slide. You can do the same thing with Google Slides. That would be flattening it. With Canva, it's just a click. It's a checkbox that says to flatten. So if your terms of use don't say to secure, then that's all you have to worry about. Now, honestly, I would pay for a flat pack so you don't have to in reinsert each picture as the background if you're using PowerPoint. But again, it's up to you. Now, if you are uploading like a, a digital resource, like a Google Slides resource, then what I would do and what I typically recommend is to send teachers a force copy link. Now, what I typically do for like my drag and drop activities in Google Slides is I will save the background as an image, but with a drag and drop, the pieces on that image should be movable because students are going to be moving them. So I will save the background as an image, but then all the pieces are going to be movable. So I just send my customers a force copy link. And if you've never done that in Google Slides, when you share the link, you want it to be set to anyone with a link can view, grab that link, that URL. I usually copy paste it into like my notes app. And then you're going to see at the end, it's going to say edit and then maybe some stuff after it. Delete the edit and everything after that and replace it with copy. Test it. If you copy that link, maybe in an incognito browser, it's going to say, do you want to make a copy? That's what you want. And then they will make their own copy and they're not messing with your original. Also pro tip because there are ways that teachers can get around that. If they change it back to edit, they could technically edit it. They won't be able to edit it, first of all, if you have anyone with the link can view. You're gonna get an email saying they're requesting edit access. Don't give them edit access, but I have had that happen multiple times. But just in case you forget that anyone with the link can view, which I have done before, and they somehow can edit your original, make multiple copies. Have like a folder of like your original original, and then make a copy of all those. And then those are the ones you make a forced copy of. Just in case I've had this happen before a couple of times where somehow they got to edit my original. So I was able to go back to my original original and I could make a forced copy of that. So just that's just a pro tip. A few other things that I get questions about a lot are what's the best type of file for uploading? And I almost always recommend a PDF unless you're wanting to give them a editable PowerPoint. For Canva, if you want to give them an editable version, there are some changes now with template links with Canva. Only pro users can now use template links. So what you can do is give them a view only file and then they can make their own copy. So give them a view only link and then give them instructions to make their own copy. That way they're not editing yours, but it is editable. And yeah, that's really it with flattening, securing, the file types. I think that once you kind of get a hang of this, 
it's going to make your life so much easier and you're not going to be worried about am i going to break the terms of use am i you know following the rules you can always reach out to the clip art artist and font artist if their terms of use aren't clear and ask for clarification another thing i wanted to mention is if you're using flat pack sometimes it can be a little confusing sometimes there are glitches the creator of flat pack is great with responding to emails so get his email and send him a customer service email and he will get right back to you and that's it that's everything you need to know about flattening and securing i hope this was so helpful and i'll see you guys next week Bye bye